What's up guys, Dr. Luck here, and today's video is actually going to be an update to a video I made a couple weeks ago. So in that last video, I talked about audience insights, which is actually no longer a tool. Facebook just updated their platform and took it out. So this video will serve as an update so I can show you how to kind of work around that and still target your correct audience. And all this summer, Facebook is actually going to be rolling out a bunch of changes because iOS just had an update to their privacy policy where they're a bit more strict on what information platforms can gather, which is a good thing. Uh, we need more regulations on privacy. Um, but because of this, Facebook is having to kind of adjust their business platform. Uh, they're actually getting rid of the analytic program that they have. Um, now, this is different than insights. If you use insights on your business page, that will still be there. Uh, but if you're in the marketing field and you're a bit deeper into it, analytics will be gone. So I'll be making videos all this summer about all these Facebook updates. So don't forget to subscribe because I'll be trying to keep you all updated as things roll out this summer. But for now, let's jump into audiences and get in here to Facebook business. Alrighty, so we're here in Facebook and we're actually here on the business side of things. And so if you haven't used this before, you can get to it by following business.facebook.com. It's more of the, the back end information that you have for your business profile. Um, if you don't already have an account, you can make one for free. But if you do have one, uh, just meet me in the homepage and we can get started. So in that previous video I talked about, I talked about audience insights, which looks like this now. And before you could research specific audiences so you can make sure you're targeting the right people and kind of get some back end insight to who these people are that you're targeting. However, they've kind of updated it to more of an analytic based thing. So instead of targeting a potential audience, you can now see analytics on your current audience. And this is just kind of a throwaway account that I can show you as an example, which is why it only has one in 16. Um, but overall, I guess this is a good thing because you can kind of see insights on your current audience. However, you kind of can't get an insight for when you target people who don't already follow you. So let's jump into the home page again, and I will show you how to target your audience. So on the home page, we're going to go over here to the top left and this little hamburger icon, click on that and it will pull up all the tools that you have in your disposal. So audience insights was under analyze and report right here, but that's no longer applicable to us. And so we're just going to go to the advertise category and click on audiences. And when you do that, if you don't already have audiences as a place, it will look like this. If you do already have audiences, it'll be just a list. And then in the top left, there'll be a button to create a new one. Um, but I'm going to assume you don't have one already and we're going to start from here. So there's four different options for you. You can create a custom audience, a lookalike audience, a saved audience, and a special ad audience. So a custom audience is if you already have a pool of people, let's say website visitors, email list, someone who's already made contact with you, you can target those people, which is good for if you have an already established business. Um, but for this video, we're going to create a new audience from scratch. So we're going to create a saved audience, which is basically an audience you can refer back to whenever you're running ads in the future. And then one important note, if you are dealing with real estate, finances, or job applications, you have to use the special ad audience um, because there's more strict rules on um, discrimination. Uh, like if I'm running ads for my YouTube channel, I can, if I want to, target just women or just men. However, if I'm in real estate or something like that, I cannot do that. So if you're in real estate finances or job applications, um, there's not much leniency about targeting a specific audience. You kind of have to be all encompassing, which is good. It, um, it decreases discrimination in things that are really important like housing. So for this, if you're not in one of those categories, we're going to go to create saved audience and create a new audience. So to pull up this box with a whole bunch of different stuff you can target. Um, I'm going to quickly skip down here to the bottom for detailed targeting. This is kind of where we can pull up some attributes that we had for audience insights. So we can do demographics, interests, behaviors, and stuff like that. But first, let me talk about some of the other stuff before we dive into that. So you can name your audience. This is good if you have a lot of different audiences and you would keep them organized. But for this, I'm just going to name it test. And then... Below that, if you already have some existing audiences, you can actually combine them. So let's say you have like a winter audience and a summer audience that you want to combine into an all year audience. You can do that. So that's that's handy. Save you some time. And then location. I have the, just the United States. But if you're maybe like a local business and you just want to target people in your local area, that would be good for you. So you can make sure you are getting potential customers and not someone a thousand miles away. And then age, gender, and languages, 
pretty self-explanatory. And then the important part down here, detailed targeting. So you are free to type in whatever you want. So I can type in self-employed because I want to target people who are self-employed and just click on it from here. Or if you're not really sure where to get started, you can hit browse over here and we'll pull up three different categories. So the three categories are demographics, interest, and behaviors. And if you don't know what demographics means, that basically just attributes that define a person. So like my demographic would be 25 years old, um, received a bachelor degree. So anything that like describes a person, that's what demographic means. So of these three categories, I would recommend having a few of each just so you can make sure you have a good pool for Facebook to pull from. So, so let me just jump in here real quick and do some for me and then I'll meet you after I have some uh, filled out. Okay, so I just pulled a few here, um, just like one or two of each. So, <clears throat> so ideally you want as many as possible just so you can make sure Facebook really has a good sense of who you're looking for. And then if you see, if you hover over one of these, you can see the size of the audience. So people who work for Etsy or people who like have an Etsy shop, there's 19,700 to pull from. Now this doesn't mean Facebook will show these to all 19,000 people, but it's just a good way to give you a sense of how big you, uh, of, of a pool you're pulling from. So I chose this audience based on people who I think would be interested in my YouTube videos. So demographics, people who are Etsy sellers, people who are interested in Etsy, self-employment, YouTube videos, and are interested in entrepreneurship. So all things that are related to my YouTube channel. So as you can see, I, I don't have a wide range just because I wanted to be quick with it, um, but you should have at least three in each category. And then if you know there's things you need to exclude, you can exclude this. Like let's say I don't do Shopify, I only do Etsy. I can exclude Shopify so I can make sure Etsy doesn't show these to, uh, Shopify sellers. Um, that's not the case, but it's just an example. So you can exclude or narrow your audience. And then down here is the last option for you. It's connection type. So connection type is based on people who like or don't like your page. I would recommend people similar to those currently liking your page because you don't want to reach out to people who already like your page if you're trying to get people to like your page because uh, that's pointless. Um, but if you reach out to people similar to liking your page, you can feel pretty confident that they're going to have similar interests. So you can choose these or have a different page. Uh, it's up to you. This I never really focus too much on. I just leave it as this and move on with it. So so then once you have all that stuff, go down here to create saved audience. And I am not sure why the cancel and the create saved audience buttons are both gray. That is a terrible UI experience. Uh, it's UI 101, but you're going to create saved audience and it should pull up in here. So now you can create more audiences and have a larger pool to pull from. But now whenever create an ad, you can have this already ready made so you can just assign it to an ad and feel confident that it's going to the right people. So uh, I hope this video helped. Again, this is an update to an old video and I'll be continuing to make update videos this summer as Facebook rolls out these changes. So uh, don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, leave a thumbs up. Have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And uh, thanks for watching. I will see y'all in the next video.